Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to economies of scale, introduction to diseconomies of scale, and then we'll be finishing with a summary. Right, so when we think of economies of scale, it almost sounds like we're thinking about something getting bigger. And that's exactly what economies of scale are, because we are describing firms that find it beneficial to be large due to the existence of economies of scale. So, what are economies of scale? And we're going to explore this throughout this video. So, when a firm finds that it is more cost effective to produce on a larger scale, it is experiencing economies of scale. So essentially, a firm benefits by growing larger. Economies of scale arise when there is a fall in the long run average costs as the volume of output rises. Firms experiencing these economies of scale are said to be efficient. We'll come back to the point about it being efficient and we'll walk through an example of a firm producing board games to see how we can benefit from economies of scale. So for every board game the firm is producing, there is a cost of production. And let's just say each board costs three pounds. As they produce more board games, the cost per unit decreases. So when we had just two board games, the cost per unit was three pounds. But now, as we are producing more, we are reducing our costs per unit to two pound fifty. So the relationship we're seeing right now is that when output increases, we are seeing a fall in the cost per unit. And this is because a firm can benefit from higher efficiency in its manufacturing operations. And the way we can see this is by thinking of economies of scale as a result of increasing returns to scale. So increasing returns to scale is when we say double our inputs. Say we went from one worker to two workers and we went from one machine to two machines. And the resulting factor is that we have more than doubled our outputs. So we've basically doubled our inputs and we've got more than double out of what we were expecting. And there are two types of economies of scale, internal economies of scale and external economies of scale. And we can illustrate economies of scale on the long run average cost curve, but we'll come back to what internal economies of scale are and external economies of scale are in a later video. So when we think about our economies of scale on a long run average cost curve, we can pretty well deduce that when we are moving down our average cost curve like this, this is our economies of scale. And why is that the case? Well, we are increasing our costs. However, our average costs are falling more than our quantity because we are experiencing increasing returns to the scale. Remember, average cost is nothing more than our total costs divided by our quantity. And if total costs are increasing, if our quantity is increasing more than our total cost, then average cost will be falling as a result. So now let's consider the other side of the coin, which is diseconomies of scale. And this is experienced when firms become too large and they may find their costs per unit rise as they increase production. And this is what we know as diseconomies of scale. So diseconomies of scale arise when there is an increase in the long run average cost as the volume of output rises. When a firm experiences diseconomies of scale, they are said to be inefficient. Imagine a company producing light bulbs. Each light bulb has a cost of production. So let's just say our cost of production is 50p. If the cost of each light bulb rises as they increase production, the firm experiencing diseconomies of scale. So suppose our light bulb, which used to be 50p for production, now costs 60p. And decreasing returns to scale is the case where we have doubled our inputs or tripled our inputs, but as a result, we have had less than double of the output. So we are not increasing our output in proportion or more than proportion. So say when we just had one worker and just the one machine, we produced two light bulbs, but then we've added this second worker and this second machine, and now we've only produced three light bulbs as a result. So in effect, we are not getting as much out uh, for the cost. And remember as well that the cost of each work is the same and the cost of each machine is also going to be the same. Now, there are, of course, two types of diseconomies of scale, internal diseconomies of scale and external diseconomies of scale, which will be covered in a later video. And we can illustrate our diseconomies of scale on the long run average cost curve. And by now, we looked at economies of scale where we were going down 
the average cost curve, but now with diseconomies of scale, we are going up the average cost curve. And it's for precisely the same intuition as we saw before, where we had average cost is equal to total cost. Our total costs in this case are going up faster than our quantity. So our quantity is increasing, yes, but it is increasing at a slower rate than our total cost. Therefore, our average costs are going up as depicted by this equation. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.